All right, so sin number three. The third one. The third one, again, the third is a little subtle, but the third one is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Initially, that doesn't sound like that big a deal. Yeah, it's like no big deal. Yeah. It You're like, like okay, deal. going to a seance, uh, baptizing myself in pig's blood, yeah, yeah. invoking the dark lord, that sounds yeah, yeah. really evil and sinful. Uh, being in some crazy orgy, that sounds really sinful, but yeah. unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. That's number three. Yeah. Why does Satan attach himself to that? I think what we have, and we, I fleshed this out in the book, this is something that Father has developed as a background as a Thomistic, in Thomistic psychology, but also uh, Kyle Clement has really, really hammered this home over the years of experience. And I've condensed it down, and I've seen this again and again in dealing with it, as mentoring people through these, these, these difficulties that they're going through. Um, we can create what's, what, what, what we call the psychological compatibility with the demon. A symbiotic relationship. Yeah. So if you can see, you know, you, you watch cops, right? I used to watch cops. Uh, it's kind of a neat show. Um, and, and, and they'll, they'll show, uh, um, they, they'll show like a, an abusive, whatever call it is, a 1021 or whatever. Jesse mm -hmm. knows the nomenclature, a, a, a domestic violence. And you'll see, you'll see the cops will be showing up. They roll up. There'll be the, 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 the bum over here, the baby daddy. You see her, she's all, messed up she's got a shiner and the furniture's all thrown out obviously there was an altercation here and she, the cops show up nine times out of ten what do you see don't take him away i love him right i, I it was my fault and he i didn't he said oh, i didn't do anything once you we're good this is my home and we're good you know and so the cops take him away and what happens he goes he spends the night down in jail right he comes back and he says why didn't you call the popo on me and he gives her the big speaking there is, you know, you know, because because they still got this psychological enmeshment. Right. So what's happening? In the yeah. Now, her brokenness feeds into his brokenness and back back and forth. Exactly. Yeah. So if you understand all of that works now, if you could put on another layer of lenses, it's kind of like the the old biology back you know, when you would lay down the layering of the frog, you know, the yep. skeletal system. Mm -hmm. The next layer, you could see the layer going dimensionally upward and outward in the in the cosmos. This, the evil spirits in the air are also manipulating. They're attracted in this way and vertically and laterally down into the couple. So what's animating them behind the scenes is happening in the diabolic realm. So there's a, there's a psychological enmeshment with this person this way, but also going with an attractiveness to the evil spirit. Right. And if you want to talk about, again, the evil spirit by their nature rejects, they, they understand completely what, what vicarious atonement means, but they reject it. They also... Uh, are bound in an existential state of unforgiveness. They have the ultimate father wound, if you will. The demon. The demon. Does. Yeah, because the demon used to be an angel. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so even even having, uh, uh, when you see the reaction of the Tadeum, you know, you're familiar with the Tadeum. Yeah, it's, it's a hymn. It's a hymn that remembers, it's the chant of the choirs before the throne of God. Right. You know, and the angels have fallen, and these fallen angels have gone from standing before the throne of the living God. Yeah. To this guy, yeah. you know. Well, it, it reminds me of the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father. Jesus gave us one prayer that is the prayer. We say it at every sacrifice at the Mass. We pray it in the Rosary. It is literally the breath of the Christian is the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against as, us. As we forgive. Yes. It is built in to the Christian message, the Christian prayer life to forgive. And I have to say, it's hard to forgive people. Yeah. You know, and I have to, sometimes I'll have thoughts, even though I've forgiven certain people, I have thoughts and memories and I will have to just take a moment and talk to God and work through the forgiveness again. Yeah. Right. Cause there's still like pain or damage there, but we as Christians, we must forgive and it seems like if you're not going to forgive you can't pray the our father and if you can't pray the our father how are you even connected with jesus as savior yeah and the demons like you're saying that that is an entry point yeah total entry point if you, if you look at luke's gar the our father of the lord's prayer in luke's gospel it says our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come 
on earth as in give us day our daily bread. It skips that middle phrase, thy will be done. And it, Luke transposes it to the garden seat where Jesus says, not my will, but thy will be right. done. In the perfect literary chiasmic center of the garden scene right. highlights that point, thy will be done, right. not my will. So Luke's not trying to omit he's not trying doctrine. To omit. He's trying, he's resituating it. He's, he's contextualizing. You want to know the ultimate prayer. Yeah, thy will it's be done. It's the prayer of, of Jesus's prayer of surrender in the garden to what the Father wills. Right. Right. And so, and so who are we to, un, to not to hold forgiveness, unforgiving towards other? I can just tell you, we're dealing with cases, and, and they're all tied in together, by the way. They're all, they're, mm -hmm. all these things are interlinked. Right. In, in, in curses, for example, one of the things that keeps a curse, that, that kind of keeps pounding away uh, on somebody, it holds to uh, when, when there's a, a really high level of unforgiveness in the person. Mm -hmm. In every case of possession we see, everyone, there's some unforgiveness there, whether it's unforgiveness of God, mm. right? Uh, what does that mean? Because God doesn't sin. So yeah. what, what is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. They, 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 you're right. They, but they feel, a, the, again, the demon projects. Right. How could a loving God let you have suffered this? Right. How did this, if he loves you so much, how did, you, how did he let you suffer this sexual abuse? So let's say somebody was sexually abused. It might be, I, I, I refuse to, uh, to forgive the person who forgave me. So until that unforgiveness is gone, the demon's going to hold there. And so we have a lot of exorcists and people, they think, we just got to come up with the right prayer. No, they've got to unpack that. They've got to forgive as the Father has forgiven. Right? They, have to, mm -hmm. they have to pray for that. They have to work through that. Because then that psychological trauma, on that wound, it, the, the demon's going to hold there. And so, so they could they could still be holding on to unforgiveness of someone who's hurt them, unforgiveness of God. Um, how did you let this happen to me? They project to God because right. God is perfect. He has nothing that we have to forgive Him for. So, so but they project the demon is projecting this perceived right. hurt by God, and then unforg the most common is unforgiveness of self. Like, how did let this happen? Why was I so stupid? I should have never. They can't forgive themselves. Another form of kind of pride, you know. And, and so we, we talk about the difference, the difference between trauma and violence. Trauma is subjective and, and violence is, is, is objective. Christ suffered with violence on the cross, but he suffered no trauma. Mm. And, that, and it's by this definition. Right. It's in that psychological trauma, right, that we either become bitter or better through our suffering. How many people have you, have you talked to that suffered tremendous things and after they've worked through it, they say it's the best thing that ever happened to yeah, it's the best thing ever happened to me. That's a mystery, but they very don't. impressive people say that. Very impressive people. Yeah, most people don't. Yeah, yeah. So, so they suffer this trauma. This is why I use as an example in the book. I use Maria Saint Maria Goretti, mm. who suffered violence, but she dies praying, "Don't do this to me. Don't endanger your soul. You're committing mortal sin." She died preserving her chastity, and she died praying for him, and she surrendered her life and died preserving chastity, praying for his soul, Alessandro, who later converts. Right. And her own mother was present. At, uh, and he and her sat with, I, right, if I, Alessandro sat with her, her mother, I believe, yes. at the canonization of St. Marie Grimaldi. Yeah. And so we, that's, this is what the saints are great. They're, they're examples for this. Because we're either, now this is language picked up from, 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 from Kyle Clement. He says we're either at ad hominem or we're, we're, we're ad orientum, mm. right? So when traumatic things happen to us, when violence happens to us, when, when life happens, we either, especially the, these dark things, these bad things, we either turn inward. Ad hominem, is a, is, it's, it's a philosophical phrase, meaning an inward towards, towards the self, an emotional subjective response. Or in this trauma, we turn ad orientum. Yeah. You know, we know this, this yeah. to the east, to the, to Christ. Rising you know, sun. The rising sun. You, 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 you either, you either turn inward on yourself and it becomes poisonous or you turn outward to Christ. When you turn outward to Christ, you're close to liberation. But the, to the extent that you turn inward, unforgiveness holds, is a holding point right yeah. there. Unforgiveness, a, a, a blue collar definition of unforgiveness is taking poison and waiting for the other guy to die. All right. I'm going to show you. Dr. Right. Marshall, yeah. I'm gonna suck down this poison, yeah, and I'm just gonna wait for you, right? And then I'm gonna slowly fall yeah. and dead, yeah. It kills ourselves, it does, yeah. But so it's but it's so prevalent, 
among among uh, 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 Christians, among everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, and so learning to turn, it, it, it ties back into the previous discussion on suffering. Yeah. And the third, this third one, unforgiveness. I think the popular understanding of demons and possession is, oh, I got possessed. Yeah. Or I, or I did a Ouija, we're now possessed. And then the exorcist comes in and he says the prayer in Latin and shakes the crucifix. And now you're unpossessed. And now I can go back to my life. Yes. And, and what I'm, what I'm hearing from you, particularly on this third point is the psychology of the person obsessed or afflicted or possessed by a demon is integral to understanding all of this. Yeah. Right. Cause demons are, are attracted and then take hold based on human behavior and human patterns. Right. It, right. It, it's not just a, I got possessed. Yeah. Yeah. I just, somebody the sneezed. devil made me do it. Uh, yeah. 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 I, the I devil. was in New York city and they sneezed on me. Yeah. yeah no, and the devil or the devil made me do it. Oh, yeah. The Geraldine, the Geraldine, the devil made me do it. There is this interaction between the person and the demon. Yeah. And the demon, it's almost like if you watch like an advanced rock climber, you know, they're moving up this face of this rock and they're looking at every place. Oh, I can put three fingers here and I can put a toe here. And now I'm up another two feet. These guys are freaks. And, yeah, and, yeah, and they're crazy. studying, they're strong and they're agile, but they're also studying the face of that rock and looking for how they have mobility yeah. to map their body onto that rock. And, and that's what the demon's doing. Yeah. He's looking for those contours in the human, and that's how he makes his grips yeah. and his movement up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is fa- that's fascinating. It really yes. is, because that's what attracts him. That's the, the, the psychological compatibility. Mm-hmm. And so um, we, when we work with cases, part of the, again, part of the, the work we do is, is intellectual, and you have to get separation. We, we, you, you know, part of the, the, the there's, there's six phases to, to liberation and a key phase in the mental in the middle um, is separation. You, it's like a fighter. You remember Mike Tyson when he was a fighter, when he was, when he was a heavyweight champ, the, 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 the style to beat Mike was they would punch, punch, grab, punch, punch, grab. And so they would score a couple punches and they would just wrap him up. And so Mike Tyson had the ability to do a six inch punch. He didn't need much separation, but he, he could do a six inch punch and knock guys out. You could, yeah. some of his greatest knockouts, they, they, he only needed this much space because he had so much force, but he needed separation. He had to push back, drop the right leg, throw the uppercut. He needed just a little bit of separation. You need that separation. And in and, and, and the spiritual realm, that separation is moral, right? So you, you, if, you're, if you're at const in, in mortal sin, habitual venial sin, the demon's going to hold there mm. and psychological. Where are those areas of trauma that I haven't? And this is why mental prayer, you know, we don't want, this isn't under our five or part of the, these are the problems. The solution is mental prayer mm-hmm. it, because in mental prayer, you we need to, to define you, mental prayer. Yeah. Yeah. You, because the, yeah. no offense, but the Jesuits have kind of screwed it up. Well, yeah, and they, then I think a lot of people, uh, Catholic or not Catholic, yeah. they don't even know what that is. So, yeah, exactly. so can you do a one minute yeah, yeah. definition? Men, mental prayer is the engagement, use it, the using of the imagination. In, in a meditative form um, um, towards an object of the faith, whether it's the words of Christ, imagining your, yourself at the, uh, uh, at the feet of Jesus uh, with Mary Magdalene, listening to Jesus speak, imagining yourself at the wedding feast of Cana. Right. You're mentally entering into the words and de- deeds of, of, of Christ. Right. And you're spending time. It isn't this yeah. magical thing where you put your thumb in your belly button. Right. And, no. oh, oh, yeah, meditation. No, like no. The Eastern, meditation Eastern meditation is like emptying the mind. Right. This is bringing the mind into the truths of God, redemptive history. And being present in that, and let that letting that wash over you and clean you and purify you. Right, and the reason and Catholics all every Catholic needs to be doing this. Right, this is what we're right. called to do. Now, I, I mentioned the Jesuits, and the, the, they they use the word contemplation for meditation, and they'll use they, they have different kind of terminology. Right. But then, and the I, I work more with the, the Benedictine and the Carmelite Augustinian. So med, meditative prayer or mental prayer. Um, it, so that's why the Rosary is mental prayer. Lexi, we call Lexio Divino, sacred reading, reading of scripture, but slowly meditating and prayerfully going over the word of God. 
because this is why it's important, um, and this is the significance of, of Father Ripperger's contribution to this field, and that is to mystic psychology. Yeah. It's the imagination. You have to learn how to control the imagination. If the imagination is filled with those images, mm-hmm. right, the images of that hurt you, of the abusive moment, of your own self-destructive behavior, in the imagination, if, if that's where you're holding, that I mean, if, if you're stuck there, the demon holds there. So we were at a presentation. Uh, Dr. Doc, Dr. Joe Lipitsky is one of the the uh, um, mental health professionals that's on the consultative team with Father Ripperger. He gave a presentation to our teams last year. It's fascinating. Here's what he said. Um, he said that he differentiated between a front brain and a back brain. Now I'm I'm a doctor, but not the, that kind of doctor. I'm slightly above Dr. Dre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, uh, um, so so. So front brain and back brain. So back brain is big concepts. Back brain is, is um, um, big ideas. And the demon wants to hold us in the back brain. Um, it's always going to be this way. Mm. You were so stupid in doing that. Why were you thinking? You're unworthy. You're, you're, God cannot possibly forgive you for this. He wants to hold us in the back brain. The front brain is, is engaged, cogitative, detailed thinking. Okay, what we're doing right here, yep. detailed cogitation. And this is what this, 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 this uh, uh, medical professional, PsyD, um, says that 60 seconds of front brain engagement, cogitative work, it could be on anything, cogitative work, um, has the equivalent effect on the brain, according to this doctor, of one dose of anti-anxiety or anti-depression uh, meds. 60 seconds of um, anything. So, um, so, right. the, the, so the power of the human brain is so, to heal itself. So play chess, yeah. have a profound conversation. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so have a, just going deep, detailed studies on something, 60 seconds. Now imagine that that's true physiologically. Now, when you're working through scripture and you're meditating on the life and the words of Christ, you're engaging the imagination. You're now developing custody of the imagination. Mm, yes. This is the this is that what the the emotions and the memory, this is where this is where the spiritual battle takes place. We all we always want to focus on the, the the carnal and and you know all these other things. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. But this is where the real battle takes place because it's in that construct, the emotions, the memory. That's the data set that the demon has to work with. That's the, the Betty White moment, if you will. You know, the Betty White commercials, you're not yourself when you're hungry. And it shows Betty White playing tackle football with these guys, right. complaining. You know, he can project and distort those memories. And, and so this is where a key element of the battle takes place. So you have to purify those memories. You have to purify the memory. And, the, and, and you do that through, through use of the imagination. It only comes through the engagement of the, that faculty in meditative prayer. Yeah. This is very key. Now, this is later in the book, the early part of the book. And before you do the book, we have our protocol, the first phase, and you can get it in the app store. It's a 30-day set regimen, kind of like Exodus 90. It's kind of a PX90 for the soul, if you will. And it's a set discipline of prayer. A withdrawal from the world, a, a, a media fast, withdrawal back out of the world, and you're only reading, you can read, I tell them, you can read anything you want. This is our, I don't tell them, but this is our protocol. You can read anything you want so long as it's today's mass readings. You know, yeah. back in the day when, when our parents were right. young, you could buy, when you bought a car, you could get any color car you want so long as you pick green or black. Yeah. You know, right. And so any readings you want so long as it's today's mass readings. So you yeah. get, get them engaged in lecture, scripture. You know, in scripture so, from the beginning. So yeah. they're starting to lay the foundation. But here's what we found the demon responds to the imposition of order. As much as to the prayers yes. themselves. Like, we want this magic prayer to be done. Give me it in my little McDonald's package so I can be demon free and go back to a semi pagan, semi Christian life. God wants all of you. Right. He doesn't just want you, He wants your wife, He wants your children, He wants your siblings, He wants your parents, He wants their whole family. So, and you might have to suffer to bring them on. And part of that is imposing order. The imposition of order is critical. So, once you have the order placed, here's what St. Catherine of Siena, who was a doctor of the Catholic Church, she says, every Christian should pray at least 30 minutes a day. She said, unless you're busy. And then you should pray for an hour. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we have to, you start, there's, and we've got to understand, going back to the, going back to the basics, there's three ty- basic types of prayer. Vocal prayer, 
you know, praying the divine office. I prayed vigils this morning and, you know, prayed the rosary already today. Uh, I prayed prayers that I have in this book from Father Gripper's book on deliverance for the laity, deliverance prayers, vocal prayer. Then there's uh, meditative prayer or mental prayer. And so engaging the imagination and then contemplative prayer. We like to go straight to the contemplative prayer, but between right. me mental prayer and me contemplative prayer, there's a lot of suffering, okay? Mm -hmm. But you got to lay the discipline. So laying the, the foundation, again, the demon responds to the imposition of the order as much as to the prayers themselves. And now when we do mental prayer, we start to gain custody of the imagination. Yeah. And this is where we can we, we're, we're grow in true growing and holding us. And not, you know, so, so th that is very key. And, and learning to, to catch the clean from unclean projected thoughts. Yeah. And so, so very key, very key, key, key is, is that. And, and uh, unforgiveness is right there. And so you have to rework the imagination, what's embedded, what Father Ripper calls the data set is what the enemy has access to. You know, he doesn't have access. My data set is different than yours, your experience. I, I will never have a distorted memory or fond memory of, cons of saying mass. Like yeah. you, you did as, as a, as a, well, Fake, fake mass, mass but yeah. you still have uh, yeah, bricks, yeah. right? Know? Uh, oh, you know, it's yeah. all different. Um, so you're not going to have projections or thoughts of of deserts and dogs and combat, right. and it's just different experiences. And so, learning to get custody, you can start to control the imagination and start using the imagination in prayer. Because then now we're starting to compete and pray as the angels pray. Yeah. Through say Thomas talks about, he calls it illumination or projection. That's how they project to us, and the demon works in the same way. Yeah. So one of the ways we we, we call it the judo prayer. This is something that Kyle came up with. It's a beautiful prayer. It's very simple. We had this big theory of voluntary expiatory atonement, right? And we sum it up in the blue collar terms. It's the judo prayer. And it goes like this. Lord, I'm experiencing X, unforgiveness, back pain, uh, 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 anxiety, sleeplessness. If this is not from you and is diabolic in origin, I ask you to send it back to its source with a tenfold blessing. So now you've taken this, you've re you, you ask God to discern that this is not from you and it's diabolic, send it back to its source with tenfold blessing. But if you want me to carry this cross, I willfully accept it. Mm. I asked you for the grace to carry it. And I offered up Matthew. Yeah. I offered up for my brother who's, right. who's left the faith. Yeah. I offered up for the Pope. I offered right. up for my pastor. Yeah. You know? So you're now you're entering into the distribution of graces by offering up not just your physical suffering, because suffering takes men forms, as we know. Mm -hmm. Offering up your mental suffering, your unforgiveness, the wounds. If you, so we're dealing with cases of, of, the, of, of, say, psychological trauma, and there's a deep unforgiveness. We start by saying, can you now offer your suffering up for that guy? Yeah. It's going to be hard. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. But it's the process. Yeah. But that's, so when you can do that, you're now fighting like an angel. Now you're like an, that's the way the angels bow. Mm-hmm. And so that's why unforgiveness is key. Fantastic. Coming to forgiveness yeah. is very yeah. Key. Yeah, that's a surprising one. Yeah. Forgiveness for number three. Okay, so that's three. We got two more to go. All right. I'm gonna take a quick break here. This video is brought to you by the new St. Thomas Institute. You can learn more at nsti.com. We have full courses on the Old Testament from a Catholic point of view, the New Testament from a Catholic point of view, church history, Thomas Aquinas, a lot of the stuff that we've covered today. We cover that all in depth over at the New St. Thomas Institute. So if you want to take online courses, become confident as a Catholic, go to the next level, sign up as a student today. I will be your guide, your coach, your professor. Go to nsti.com and sign up as a student. Okay, hope you're enjoying this conversation. To keep watching the next part, click here and learn more.